Today's video is brought to you by Aniba.com. Aniba.com is a digital marketplace with over 20,000 digital products. And with an ever expanding library, it's the go to point for all your gaming needs. Aniba will bring you the hottest deals in the market on titles new or old, and with an excellent Trustpilot score, you can buy with confidence. So, whether you play on Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, or PC, you're sure to find something that suits your needs. Navigation of the website is very easy. Search via operating system, game genre, and region. You can also create your own wish list and grab those deals at a later time. Checkout is simple. Just add a selected game to your basket, select the payment with the choice, whether that be Trustly or PayPal, etc. Be sure to enter the discount code bang for buck to save yourself an extra 3% off your purchase. Aniba is here to help with product activation, payment, product delivery and other issues should the need arise with their 24-7 live support. So save some money and grab a great deal with Aniba.com. Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'll be playing some more Cyberpunk 2077 and um, I'm going to quickly go through the in-game settings now. So playing at a resolution of 3840 by 2160, uh, 90 field of view, film grain and chromatic aberration always have off, just not a fan of those effects neither am i a fan of motion blur so that's all off everything else though is at ultra all ray tracing is on and i've got dlss at the quality preset well i did until i accidentally turned it off and um that is pretty much it now in terms of gameplay you can actually toggle the uh crowd density but i always have that high and it's usually high by default anyway so a few of you may have just noticed that there's an Intel i9 1200K in my system now. So you're probably wondering what happened to the 5950X and I thought you wasn't going to get an i9 1200K. What's going on? Well, some of you may know I recently bought myself a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and I've been so, so impressed with it and um, it really has uh, left me feeling a little bit um, unbalanced with my performance of my two gaming PCs, at least at lower resolutions. The 5800X 3D and 6900XD completely does destroy it. Sorry, got a call coming through. Yo, V, there's this badge. He needs help with his investigation. Guy's known for operating in the gray zone. No scruples about working with mercs. Attach more deeds for you. So, as I was saying, um, the 5800X 3D was just basically putting a beating on my 5950X and RTX 3090 Ti below anything below 4K so I actually wanted to um, do something about that and rather than buy another 5800X 3D which wasn't an option for me anyway because I like the uh, productivity performance that the 5950X provides but the 12900K um, does have really really good productivity and it also has better gaming performance than the 5950X so I thought this is a, a decent upgrade. It provides me with the opportunity to do some cool AMD versus Intel content for you guys as well. And um, I've got plenty of comparisons on the way. So I'll go through some of the parts that I bought. I bought the... Let's take these guys out first. Pretty dangerous. So you guys like my shotgun. So I bought, for the motherboard, I bought the MSI Unify Z690 motherboard, obviously it's DDR5. Pretty pricey motherboard, but I was so impressed with my MSI X570 Unify that I couldn't bear to go and change to another motherboard. I'm so used to the Unify now, it's just on my go-to motherboard. And uh, it works pretty much as just as good as my X570 one, it looks the same. I pretty much understand where everything is in the BIOS, so um, the features are the same. You can still make your own custom fan profiles. It's just such a brilliant motherboard. I recommend it to everyone. One thing about MSI is it really has good memory compatibility. So I bought the G Skill Trident um, Z5 RGB uh, 6400 MHz DDR5. Now the sub timings on that are CL32, uh, 39, 39, 102, and it runs at 1.4 volts. That's the XMP profile anyway, and that's what I'm running now. And um, the main thing is it works. There are some motherboards that won't do 
6400 megahertz so unify solid when it comes to that stuff um in terms of my uh, cooling i went with the ek velocity 2 water block it's a uh, custom water block specifically for the outer lake 1700 um socket and um as you can see my temps are really really good now i've got to give it to older lake the power draw while gaming even while overclocked is really really low i'm able to have a uh p core um, clock of 5.2 gigahertz and uh, e core clock of 4.1 gigahertz for whatever reason my um msi afterburner won't display um 5.2 gigahertz i don't know why it's missing um <laughs> Um, some extra megahertz there, 21 megahertz, I'm not too sure why, but it is at 5.2 gigahertz in the BIOS and I'm also at 4.1. My uh, BCLK is at 100, so there's no funny business going on there. It's just MSI Afterburner doesn't want to display um, or round it up to 100, so if anyone knows how to get around that, let me know. But uh, for now, I'm a bit, a bit puzzled by that. Anyway, let me bring this video footage to Aaron. So yeah, I got some good comparisons on the way. So I did a poll on my channel. I'll just quickly explain that in a moment. I just gotta quickly give away this video. Yeah. Aaron, it's V. I've got the scrolls. Oh V! <laughs> Thought you were another one of those Serenity Bible whack jobs. Come in. So hit any snags along the way? There always are. Handle them. You're real tough as nails, huh? That's how you survive out there. All right, now hand over those scrolls already. Choppity chop chop, huh? Here, take them. Great work. I'll spread the word you do solid merc work. Coming from Aaron McCarlson, that'll go far. I'm sure it will. Take care. So I did a poll on my uh, community page. Um, asking what do you think would provide the best high refresh rate gaming performance in terms of system so the options were 5800 x3d and uh, Ryzen RX 6 or well, RX 6900 XD and versus the 12900k and the Nvidia RTX 3090 Ti and I think around 70% of you guys said that the uh, 12900k and 3090 Ti would uh, Will take the crown but i beg to differ and i'm gonna run those Aaron's happy i'm happy always pays to be on good terms with badges right gigs closed eddies on their way from what i've seen of the 5800 x3d is quite a special chip so now that i've got the ability to do all of this testing in-house i'll be bringing you a comparison real soon Obviously at 1440p and 1080p, no point of doing 4K, everything's pretty GP bound at that point. So in terms of uh, 4K gaming, it's, this system's not going to make um, much difference when it comes to uh, my previous experience. However, there are games where the 12900K has the edge, like, and this is one of them. Also, in things like emulators like RPCS3, which I use, um, I'll get better performance so you know it will have some benefits and just having DDR5 and the PCI, PCIe Gen 5 is a uh, you know it's a welcome thing for the future and I think I'll just be able to drop in um, a Raptor Lake CPU when it releases as well so there's an upgrade path there for me so I believe it uses the same socket hopefully it does if it doesn't that'll just suck so uh, yeah that, that's my um, that's the story behind the changes. I'm sure you guys, some of you guys want to know why. Because I have been uh, saying for quite a long time I want to go with the 1200K. So um, this is why the change. The 5800X3D really made me see things in a different way. And uh, what can be achieved at low, low resolutions and, uh, than 4K. There is a lot of performance on the table that, that I'm losing. Now, I really need to look at the traffic better. Hey, hey, quick gig. Maelstrom clept a Malorian van. They're holding it in one of their hideouts. Address I attached. Go there and nab the shard from that van. 
Other words, you're clapping from the clappers. Need more info? Scan the attachment. Wish they had a picture of the van, but it shouldn't be too hard to find. But these are the maelstrom guys I gotta deal with. Okay, let's get this party started. Let's go. Right, it's pretty tough. on the roof myself. what just happened there and that was weird anyway here's the van but i've got to take out that um sniper where is it i've got to find a way out there Okay, and that's everyone dead. There are quite a lot of people. But there's a data bank in this somewhere. Find the data bank from the Mororian van. Where is it hiding? Oh, here it is. Okay, that is pretty much the mission done. So Cyberpunk as ever, even with DLSS, that quality is just so goddamn demanding. I'm gonna take this to a drop point now. So in terms of the 12900K, one thing I've noticed instantly is the smoothness. I think the minimums the minimum FPS have definitely improved quite massively. That's one thing I can kind of just notice by the eye. Now, I've lost a little bit of productivity performance in certain applications, but um, it's not that far off of the 5950X to be fair, so it kind of feels the same.
Okay, so that's all done. Thanks for the shard. Sure it'll come in handy. Gig closed. So anyway guys, that was just a quick look at Cyberpunk. Um, nothing much has changed. It sucks that we're not getting any DLC till next year it seems. And um, yeah, I just wanted to show you my updated system. I'll uh, show some pictures at the end of this video um, so you guys can just have a quick look. But um, yeah, thanks very much for watching guys. And, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video.